Oh, phone. Let, let me um. Let me. My cell me. phone. Mm -hmm. And my cell phone. And uh, see what we got. If I'm on my phone yet. Okay, it should be coming up here. Oh, let me get my. Oh, it's right. Oh, here. there you go. We on. Yeah. Yo, Quest, you leaving mm -hmm. again? Why you no, leaving? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm going right here. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going right here. <laughs> I'm going I'm, right here. And I'm not going nowhere. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Yes, sir. Look at that. Yep, yep, yep. So we're waiting for the room to fill up. If you want to call it a room. I think the, the internet is my living room sometimes. <laughs> Yes, welcome to those who are on already. Um, mm -hmm. Just going to give it a second before I say my spiel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so listen, so one of my friends came on just now, uh, Quest. He's mm -hmm. a, he's a you know, bigger man to me, right? Desmond, right? Mm -hmm. So I know him in, in the DMV. Yeah. He was at the church. Yeah. Well, I didn't know it was John P's cousin or or... I'm guessing uh, cousin until like, since I've been here. You know, we grew up with John P like forever. Yeah. Oh, and, you're talking about P. Louis. I, you, yeah. you messed me up. I thought you was like John Sorry. P here. Yeah, well, go nah. ahead. Uh -huh. Yeah, John P. Louis. And so I didn't know that Desmond and he were related until John's pops passed away. Oh, wow. Yeah, but yeah, you don't, I mean, the world is tiny. Tiny. Bro. So that's the Haitian side, like uh, mm -hmm. Sasha. Cause you know, uh, John and them are are Jamaicans and mm -hmm. Haitians. Yeah. Anyway, that's a a quick bit of trivia for those who are wondering. It's because we need to fill the time before I say my spiel. Nikki's on, man. I guess we can get started, man. We yep. were trying to beat you, Nikki. That's what the whole point was. Like getting in here so we could get here before you. That that that's the whole the drill. That that's what that is. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess, Quest, you can tell me when you're ready and, you know, you know how we do it. Yeah, I sure can. Um, hold on one second here. Let me. Not a problem. I got all the time in the world in the next two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me, Quest? Yeah, I hear you. All the time in the next two minutes. I, and I see you got a dress shirt on, which means you came from somewhere or you going somewhere. This is my uniform, Quest. Look is that, that your now uniform? Now it's not a dress shirt. Yes, it's a uniform. If you look at any of my videos in the last month, any one of them in the last month, I got on the white shirt. I got a white button down. Every yeah, it's my uniform. I I used to wear a red a red a red polo shirt, and I know people thought like, does this dude have anything? Yes, I have <laughs> something else. But what y'all don't know is I live in the Caribbean. I work in the studio at home. And yeah. I'm not putting on some special something every single day. So I have uniform shirts. You have uniform shirts. Yeah, man. I wear a marina to work <laughs> until I turn on the camera because it's uncouth <laughs> and to wear a marina. Uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> What's the shirt call again? Just, I'm, uh, you mean in this, on the state side? On the state side, they call a beta. No, nah, not that. Uh, Jeez. Though, what it would say on the package, bro. What's it called? A, a tank top. A tank top. A, tank a tank shirt. Top. But it's not, it's, it's uncouth and uncivilized to wear a tank top on air. So mm -hmm. I have my uniforms up there. And when I'm done, I take it off and yeah. put on the next, you know, until next time. Anyway, yeah. now y'all know. So no quest. I have not been anywhere except to the regular places. The gym, right. gas station, right. back to the studio. Dropped a sigh off at school. And that's it. Yeah. So we ready? To, well, uh, man, the, all right. Yeah, too much. Yeah. All right. All right. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time, that's Quest, and I am David. Or you might say I'm David, and that's Quest. And uh, yeah. So, what we're allowing you to do is watch us uh, behind the scenes while we get everything ready. And when it sounds like we know what we're talking about, it'll mean that the audience of those who are listening to the fully produced version are listening live on iHeartRadio, tune in, and then the aggregators are waiting their turn. Uh, was it Apple iTunes, Google Play Store, Stitcher? 
and a whole bunch of others. And uh, yeah, so that's what it is. So in a moment, we'll sound like we know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We'll be less clown-like, funny-like. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Quest will, well, I'm not going to speak for Quest because I, <laughs> I don't ever know. I'm going to just wait. Y'all know. <laughs> when it happens, it happens. <laughs> I right, B, you want me to uh, push the button? Push that button. Okay, quiet on the set. Peace, y'all. people something man what are we talking about today indeed what up y'all it's your boy quest your host with the most and this is another edition of the marriage ain't for suckers podcast alongside my co-host my man my mellow my mellow my man l david harris thank you thank you unmute thank you have a seat yeah, have yeah. a seat. That was me. I muted myself and then get, forgot to um, have a seat. Get, get, get on the mic. Uh, <laughs> class is in session. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to reverse roles on you. I, I saw that, B. Like, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What up, man? Chilling. I'm here doing what I do, waiting to do what we do, and uh, so the people can do what they do. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Makes sense? No? Okay. Yeah, no, nah, it makes sense, man. How's things on the JA side? Yeah, we here, man. Life is life. Yeah. Yo, we just got water back. We haven't had water for a little while, man. We had oh, to wow. open pray for water literally oh, wow. at the house because, you know, sometimes they sabotage the pumps, the uh-huh. pumping stations, you know, just so sometimes the cats can get a little extra work. Yeah. But I won't go all into that. And uh, so they got the, the the pumps back up so we can get water at the house That's what's without up. having a truck come in and hope for the best. That's what's up. Yep, yeah, man. So it is what it is. It's lovely on this side. I can't wait for the wife to get home. You seen, I, I don't know if you noticed, D, but I, you know what I'm saying? Clean, I did, but I, I cleaned mean, that yeah. boy off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm reconfiguring my joint. It was dark this morning. I'm reconfiguring. So I'm going to just yeah. let it, and then two days from now, I'm like, shh, 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 shh. I'm the dude that <laughs> I'm the dude that love, you know what I'm saying, my beard. Everybody else be like, you look like an old man. The devil is a lie. And my wife, this is what she like. So it's summertime. I told her six months on, six months off. But so you're not the, young though, Quest. That's a uh, we not young, B. Oh, I'm young, B. No, you're not. You young, you a, a energetic dude, but you're not young, bro. Oh, I'm young, B. No, 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 no. You couldn't be young. You ha- why not? Be listen, man. Listen, listen. Why, why can't middle be age? Middle age is thirty five. You ain't seen thirty five in a minute. I think I think forty five might be the new thirty five. Then. Oh, there you go. There y'all. Yeah, y'all. Go. Well, I'm embracing mine's B. I, I like B. <laughs> I think it like might some, be the new thirty five. Like like Simone turned forty six yesterday. Somebody was like, "Oh, hi, tell her the twenty two. You know, you so." And I'm like, "Just tell her she hot. I don't have a problem." But I'm not in the twenty two year olds. No yes, this. Yes. But yes. like, I like the grown. I like the. You the, like the grown woman. Yeah, yeah like forty six. I like her. I'm, I I'm, like her. Yeah, I'm frolicking around the house. You got to be young to frolic. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I think I think I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm gonna have because you always can take me on where I'm going. So I'm gonna just stop. All right, Quest, take it away. Um, yeah, man. Um, as always, y'all know that we uh like to highlight uh, uh the listener of the week. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought you was going, you know what I'm saying, do your thing. But all right. No, nah, um, you didn't do your thing yet. Oh, oh, you, oh, okay. So 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 let me There's do this. order then. to this thing, bro. It's an order. All right. So let me do this part first and then we can jump into it. Exactly. Yes, yes indeed. So so let me let y'all know. Um, shouts out to Breathe University. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, <sighs> then you will be successful. I'm telling you, y'all. Uh, Breathe University, ETA, all the extensions of ETA are going to a new level. Shouts out to uh, Nikki Saunders and Jose Bennett and a couple of other heads 
uh, which uh, formed a digital company uh, called Beast Mode Digital. If you need, yeah, go check them out at Beast Mode Digital. Shouts out to my man, Marshall Fox over at 120 Design. Yeah, All he's offshoots of, e- oh, dope. I'm talking about if you're yeah. a speaker, whatever you need in terms of marketing, uh, gra- you know, visual uh, graphics, all that good stuff. Those are the people that you need to go and check out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for real, for real. All of those are offshoots of ETA and Breathe University. If you're trying to go to the next level in your business, trying to become a better entrepreneur, trying to become a speaker, try to be better in your marriage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm biased to that because your boy is the director over the marriage uh, division. So, yeah. yeah, man, if you need more information about how you can go to the next level uh, in personal development and all those things that I mentioned before, please do yourself a favor go by etinspires.com, go by breatheuniversity.com and get more info. Why? Because when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Wonderful, Quest. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I endorse everything that the brother just said. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to add my piece to it. Uh, This program is brought to you by Audible. Get your free 30-day trial and free audio book download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash marriage mm-hmm. with more than 180,000 titles from which to choose for your Android, iPhone, MP3 player, Kindle, whatever can play these uh, particular files, go get it. And today I am going to recommend Every Man's Battle, yep. Winning the War on Sexual Temptation wow. One. Victory at a time. Yeah, that sounds like good yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to have to get that one. This is by uh, Steve Arterburn and some others. Uh, but you don't have to get it. But I'm recommending that today. You can get whatever you want. And uh, let us know. Share it down in the comments section whenever you do it, even if you have to come back to it. Let us know what you got, man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, enjoy your audio book, man. Yep. www.audibletrial.com forward slash marriage yep yep go get it well i'm glad that um um th- this weekend's gonna be a special weekend for your boy d oh yeah again yeah because monday we are celebrating our uh anniversary again yeah yeah, yeah. wow so friday friday tomorrow she's taking off and this Man. weekend we will it will be a celebratory weekend how much that uh, seven in the game right now. Seven. That's a perfect number, man. It's a perfect number. So I'm expecting a good, th- it's a number of completion. So okay. I'm expecting some major things this Next weekend. Level, man. Uh, oh, this year period. Cause like I said, this is our seventh. And so I'm expecting some major things to happen, but me and faith green, the love of my life, yeah. you know what I'm saying are going to celebrate our anniversary, like I said, and we're gonna celebrate it like we ne- like, like like we never did before. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Very nice. Yep. yep, yep. Wonderful. Congratulations to the Greens, man. Greenhouse rules, hashtag greenhouse rules, man. Yeah, no like, doubt, man. No like doubt, man. Color. Like the color. You know, yeah. Ah. <laughs> like the so yeah, man. Uh shots out to our listener of the week. Um, and that would be none other than Brandon Middleton. Let me tell you something. Brandon Middleton and his wife, D, they have a all they also have a podcast called yeah, man, I checked them out. They are very official. Shots out to Brandon and shots out to Sam. Um, but they left us a review and they uh, Brandon says Quest and David are true servants. The information and stories they share have helped me be a better husband and father. The show is informative and fun, and I always uh like uh, or I uh, always something with they were longer. Oh, he said I I always wish. I'm sorry, they were longer. Keep mm-hmm. up the great work, gentlemen. Yep, and that comes from Brandon Middleton out there in Tampa, Florida. And if you want to become a listener of the week, please do go by the uh, podcast app in iPhone. Um, if you listen to iHeartRadio, wherever you are, go and leave us a review, and you too can become a listener of the week yep wonderful well big shout to the middletons man Mm -hmm. and uh shout to duan matunga Mm -hmm. and my man big man for philly pd craig and uh yeah so bless to all of you 
Mm-hmm. And we're going to go ahead and get underway, man, because this is something serious today, Quest. Yeah, let's get it, man. All jokes aside, right? Yep, yep, yep. What's our topic for today, dude? Yeah, out of the shadows, mm. when your husband has been sexually abused, out of the mm. shadows, when your husband has been sexually abused. Now, we did a, uh, a program titled something like when your wife says hashtag me too. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, this is uh, the man's version. Of course, while, you know, while the the impact of sexual abuse or harassment, sexual harassment or things related to that, you know, are are major on either side. Mm-hmm. Men and women deal with with it completely differently. I know every person is different. That's obvious. That goes without saying. But there are some, you know, some elements to the thing that are different on the man side. And I did not want to hijack the hashtag me too. No, that, that's, that's the, yeah, that's so, solely theirs. Yep. Yeah, that's, 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 mm-hmm. that's the movement for what its purpose is. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to say when your husband has been sexually abused in this case. Yeah. And the jump off, the jump off mm-hmm. is actually uh, because um it's actually because th- this guy, Terry Crews, remember him? He's an actor. Hold up. Dude. Before, before you jump off into that. Yeah. It's crazy because we know that this harassment thing and this, you know, just grabbing people and molesting people is not only happening to young girls. It was happening to grown women as well. Of course. And now not only is it happening, we thought it would happen to young boys, but it's happening to grown Men, like grown men. Uh Uh-huh. Hence what you're introducing right now. So I'm just tripping over how people have gone to the point. You know what I'm saying? Evilness has and wickedness has got to the level where they're not doing it just to children or to, 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 you know, people that are not empowered, you know, like young teenagers or whatever. They're doing it to adults now. So, Yeah. yeah, yeah, as you were saying. Yeah. So we're taking it from the perspective of not just every kind of sort of sexual depravity, Mm -hmm. but from the abuse side. So Terry Crews was not abused because he's a big grown man, but he was sexually harassed not too long ago. And and I don't know if y'all seen him, man, but the dude is benching like 400 plus pounds. Oh, that's a big dude. He's a former, I think he was an NFL football player, Mm -hmm. you you know, not uh, American footballer. And a bunch of other stuff. I mean, so it's not a matter of you figure you can typecast somebody and say, well, this person or that person can and cannot be. So Mm -hmm. I'm just going from the harassment part right now, and then we'll get into what this really is about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So he 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 tells a story where basically uh, he was in at a a get together of some kind and, you know, where he and his wife were in the same room and, and one of the one of the people in the agency uh, for his acting, I don't know how, what you call those, but like the agency for his acting, where he has to pay a portion of his income to that agency. So mm-hmm. the guy who's in charge of all of the, you know, stuff that matters for the agency comes in, makes these, you know, makes this sort of suggestive facial thing toward Cruz. And he's like, hmm, I, I think I know what I'm looking at, but I'm not too sure. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to kind of compose himself. And then the dude, the, the guy, basically just reaches over and grabs this big grown man's private parts right in front of his wife. And then of course he has the response that a lot of people would like, he re- re- retracts. I'm talking about, um, Cruz. Yeah, he's, like, he's blown away. Him. Yeah. He's blown away. And his wife keeps him under control. Like he doesn't lose his mind over it, even though in t- inside, according to the way he's talking about it, he was, but she kept him cool. But then the dude did it again, bro and grabbed his privates again. And so, you know, I'm not going to go all into that because, you know, that's a whole different story. Y'all can look that up. But it just made me, you know, think that there are women right now who are married to men who may not be per se uh, victims of sexual harassment, but they were children. The men were children who were once boys, right? Mm -hmm. Who were sexually molested. So, that's what it is. So now you have a grown man in your house that you're married to that was molested. Now what kind of thing? Like what kind of impact does that have on 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 marriage? And, you know, I read, a, you know, a few stories, but uh, yeah, we can talk about that in a moment if, if you want to jump in. 
But yeah, I, got, I, I got an interesting one that I shared with you a little earlier. I, 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 I want to say that at some point you have to realize um, the what you're dealing with in terms of, because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even know where to start with something like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, have, I haven't witnessed it before. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? But in the same breath, I sympathize and empathize with those who have. And in dealing with that, what do you do? Like, do you go and get, well, I know what my first mind would say is to go and get third party help. But as a man, how do you share that even with somebody? You understand what I'm saying? Like the magnitude of the whole act itself. And you know, you, 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 you know what they say, and there's truth to it. If if it's not repaired, it, it it will be repeated, but not necessarily in this case. Like it will repeat be repeated over and over in your mind, and it may yeah. affect the way that you deal with your spouse, deal with your you know what I'm saying? Like, where do you even start? Yeah. In terms of getting help for something like that. Yeah. We're 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 starting the conversation. You know, that almost seems cultural now. It almost seems like something you just kind of say, but I don't know what else to say either, Quest. So I'm gonna start with this uh article from 2013, but it's relevant today, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Shauna Milliken Humphrey. Mm-hmm. And uh the title is On Marrying a Survivor of Childhood Sexual Abuse. Now, this time it's a man. Mm-hmm. Uh, And so she said that she thought that an article would validate her husband's experience. She says, that's why I emailed him the link to a decade old New York magazine, New York magazine article about his alma mater. And bottom line is, you know, they blew the doors off of something that happened at the American Boy Choir School for vocal prodigies. But what happened was her husband, Travis, like it sent him somewhere. And so I'm quoting her now. It used to feel like an isolated incident. She's she's actually speaking about her husband, Trav. Trav is saying this. Mm -hmm. It used to feel like an isolated incident that that just affected me. It was the end of my workday, she says. On an October afternoon, I had just set my keys on the kitchen table. My coat was still buttoned. Now I know I spent nearly three years of my childhood at a boarding school, not just with random pedophiles, but in a culture that allowed it. This is what he said. Mm. She goes, as his wife, how do I respond? That he survived, that he's brave. So ladies, you might be wondering, like, what do I say? Like, like her, that he's a hero for letting me talk about it, that I will stand beside him with a personal mission and public vow that nobody will ever hurt him physically or emotionally again, the way that they did during his 30 months at the, as a choir boy in 18, in 1988 to 90. So she's at a loss. So she listens Mostly she n- listens, but this is what he was dealing with, Quest. Now, this is interesting. This dude, he needed, like he had this thing to sur- set a perimeter around his home each night. He keeps a, a cutlass by the bed. A long pillow divides their bed. And he said, I'm just another kid who got molested. And so she's like, what in the world do I do? I want my husband to sleep at night. And if it takes a machete in the bedroom, I've learned not to mind. But here's the thing. She said later on, I'm looking down here in the article. uh, They're eight years in uh, to their uh, to his enlistment in the military. And the big question was like, why won't you just stay? We were told that we were stupid and short sighted, throwing away good careers. I preferred that oblique assessment of my reality. If Trav were to stay in the regimented institutional environment of the military, void of any personal control while he wrestled with these memories, he would likely put a bullet in his head. This was Trav's experience, bro. So now you're his wife, ladies, like, or whatever it is that your husband, if he's been uh, sexually molested, now you're wondering, like, what do I do? It affected their their sex life, obviously. Yep. He's trying to put, as she says, distance between himself and his sense of shame. Yep. One by one, he shares information with people he trusts, and the responses are nearly universal. Somebody knows somebody who has been affected by the same issue. More often than not, instead of the discomfort he feared, there's a level of compassion. 
people love my husband. So you have these sort of. So it, is he saying that when they do, is he saying that when they discuss it, it's just a universal kind of treatment toward it? And like, it's like, oh, it happens to, it's happened to some people. It's, oh, it's all right. You know, that kind nah, of thing. And if, if you read the, if you read the whole article, it's, she's telling you, I didn't want to read the whole thing, but uh, uh, on air, but she's telling you that he's been in stages. Basically in the beginning, he would just blow it off, not because it was no big deal, but because it was just very uncomfortable. And he was just like, yeah, I'm just another one that got it. And then by the time we get to the end of the article, he's now more open to share, even though it was it was have it was taking a toll on their sex life. The dude was protecting himself against something that was in his mind based on his, if you want to say PTSD. And so by the time we get to this part about, you know, sharing with others, now he's stepping over hurdles and able to talk about it. And it's not like passe. It's just like he expects some people to say that, you know, somebody they know has gone through it and he's able to sort of process with it. Whereas before it wouldn't have been something so easy to talk about. He would blow it off basically to kind of not have to talk about it, mm -hmm. you know. So instead of the discomfort that he feared, there was a level of compassion. So people were being compassionate toward him, whereas before he thought maybe if I talk about this, pick a negative you know, outcome from our conversation. Well, well, here's the funny thing. It, I'm glad that he's talking about it. That yeah. is probably when I look at stuff like this, he's probably a part of that low percentage that does talk about it. What about those who's like, oh, I'm all right. Uh, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like he's opening the doors so that they can deal with it. But how many marriages are dealing with a family member who's been abused, who never got help with it. And in their mind, they think, okay, Man, I ain't want to. I'm, I was I started filming th th today for this new the th new video that I'm about to you know drop or whatever. Yeah. So so let me just let me just say this. This week, no, last week over the weekend, just before the weekend, I was watching Black Panther again. Right, and so um, uh, in Black Panther, it, for those of you who never seen the movie, shame on you. I might ruin it for you, but you should have seen it anyway. <laughs> T'Challa, T'Challa, who is king, talks to um, um, one of his servants who plays the role of Forrest Whitaker. And he says to him, um, you know, of course, they find out that there's a there's there's a, a, a bunch of a, a, a stuff going on in, in the kingdom. And so he tells him his father made uh, the role played by by Forrest Whitaker. He made him tell him. Uh, um, or keep it as a secret. You you repeat this to no one. Come to find out, he now has to tell T'Challa because T'Challa is king and he wants him to tell him the story. So he tells him that his father had to kill his uncle in order to save his life. His father, in essence, or his uncle, I'm sorry, went to America from Africa to go on a war dog assignment. And while he was there, he fell in love with this woman. And when he fell in love with this woman, they had this baby. Right. And he said, so where's the baby? And he told him we left him. And he said, why did you leave him? He said, because we had to protect the lie. Now, the same lie that they're trying to protect in terms of the role played by Killmonger, Killmonger comes back and is wreaking havoc within the, uh, 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 the uh, Wakanda empire. Right. And I'm saying, D, that some of us are doing the very same thing. Mm. You are protecting maybe not so much a lie, or maybe you are protecting the lie that you are okay and you're not okay. And yeah. the very thing that you're trying to protect is the very thing that's going to come back and wreak havoc in your marriage. This situation with the dude, like he's got a pillow, a long pillow in between him and his wife. Yeah. And they sleeping in the same bed. Yeah. That was then. Yeah. Right. Right. But how many other situations are those kind of things taking place in? And what you're basically doing is you're not getting the help that you need and you're giving the enemy a foothold through you because you won't get the help. You yeah. think that you could do it on your own, but you're protecting the lie that you could do it on your own, but you can't. Yeah. You need help. Look at the impact that this had on her. And, and I'm not saying it in terms of a blame. I'm saying that the impact of any kind of dysfunction, any kind of abuse, any kind of unresolved anything from mm -hmm. any of us. Mm -hmm. But in this case, Trav, she said, tells me that I'm the most beautiful, smart, 
sexy woman he's ever met. So it sounds like he's trying to do a good thing, right, Quest? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know he believes it. Still, sometimes my husband can't summon a desire to touch me in the way that doesn't feel obligatory and rote. Wow. I'd be lying if I said I never wanted things to be different. I swallowed my urges to find myself a small apartment, to have a discreet affair, or to book a hotel room for just one good night of my own sleep. On his bad days, I dreaded opening the front door because I was never sure what I would find. His secrets were now mine to keep, as you were talking about, Quest. Mm. And the weight was heavy. The words of his fans echoed in my head. You are so lucky. And then, of course, you know, he tries to distance himself from the shame, you know, because we're talking about extreme trauma quest. I don't know if that's if that is uh, redundant to say extreme trauma, but. You're talking about something that this brother has to had to carry around on his back and didn't know what to do with. And now because he's married, she is in the environment of like, what do we do with this? And here's the funny thing. The trauma that he has experienced, she's now expressing her own level of trauma dealing with it. Exactly. So dysfunction mash up everybody, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, D, and I'll say it. Um, specifically amongst my people, you know what I'm saying? Okay. People of color, like that you need clinical like help, help you okay. know what I'm saying? Like third party Assistant. help uh -huh. yep. in, in, in dealing with that and working through that. It's too heavy for us, bro. Yeah, no, Period. It, indeed it is. It's too heavy. And I don't know what that is about us not need, like from, I, I've, I've committed to myself now. I just spoke to Faith about it the other day because sometimes you go through stuff during the year and you react to it and you don't know that it has the magnitude that it did, you know what I'm saying, in terms of its effect on you. And I've committed myself to even going and seeing a therapist at least once a year, just to make sure that I'm operating at, like for real, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, I guess for lack of a better word, mel mental unhealthiness mm -hmm. is real in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at the news. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I wonder what would have happened if those people got help during the time. And it's not just like something that you don't just go and blow something up, cheat on your wife, you know, uh, whatever it is that you do that's a negative. You just don't do that overnight. Right. There are little right. things that lead up to that. Little, uh, um, uh, 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 I guess, offenses or you know things that are done wrong to you that you you yeah. didn't talk out or you know get closure for or yeah it, it that stuff don't happen overnight and i'm saying like for some of us we've allowed ourselves even in some of the stuff that we do here d like when we post stuff to the internet or post stuff to social media sometimes i see some of the comments you yeah. know what i'm saying and i'm like yeah somebody hurt you yeah and you're yeah. still in that place of hurt and you have not gotten the help that you need to deal with that hurt and if you go into another relationship with that same hurt, what what are you what you're going to do is the same thing that we're experiencing here. Not only are you going to still be dealing with the trauma that you've experienced, once you're in, you are now going to expose your spouse to a whole new uh, ex the trauma experience. And then, yeah. yeah, it's a mess. It's a so mess. So here we go. We'll use her voice again. She said, "I considered this. This was something he said a little while before. I won't go okay. into, but." It took more than a decade for the emergence of his recollections to plateau. And I thought of our life stretched out for another 10 years and then 10 more after that, mm -hmm. dealing with this issue in perpetuity. Instead of anger or hatred or an urge to leave, I imagined a lifetime with my husband bolting straight up in the early morning hours and me coaxing him to breathe, assuring him he's okay. And this is a quote, this last one here. If you remember more, I will believe you and your family will believe you and your friends will believe you and we will figure it out together. I said in my now practiced whisper, cause she's trying to figure out how do I even, how do I actually even speak to him? Like in what pitch should I speak? What cadence, you know, how loud, how quietly, at what point, you know? I set my keys on the table, hung up my coat on the back of the kitchen chair and crawled up into the nook under Trav's arm, nodding against his chest. She's doing her best, man. And so, yeah, it, it's one of those things, man. If you are the woman who is married to a man who has been, you already know he has been sexually abused or molested, whichever way you, you, you would 
uh, uh, qualify it, then it's it's a it's a good time to to get help for yourself to know how you can be of most service to him, and then based on whatever uh, counsel you get from the professional cl clinician, then know how to approach it with him so that he can get the help he needs. Because you can't just blurt it out. You need to get help and get it now. Yeah. You, you have to know how to do it. And, and, and uh, professionals can help even in that case. And if you're the guy who has been sexually molested or abused, it's unresolved, you need to go ahead and, and, and see somebody, so, somebody so, qualified to get that sorted out. So here's what I'm seeing, D. Yeah. Because when people listen to the MAFS podcast, I want them to walk away with something that they didn't have before. Um, or maybe you have, you just needed confirmation for it. Um, you said something and I'm thinking to those of us who are dealing with a spouse or you may not be, you, you, you know, you're noticing that your spouse's behavior is kind of erratic. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, start asking yourself some serious questions like, and you know that it's something that they're dealing with in terms of PTSD. You know what I'm saying? Like post-traumatic kind of ask yourself this question. Can I deal with another five years of this? Mm -hmm. Another 10 years of this? You know, and I know something like that is difficult to go to somebody and talk to them about it, but start yeah. weighing, weighing your options and like count the cost. Like, you know, do I want to deal with another five years of this, another 10 years of this, another 20 years of this, or do I want to shoulder up the embarrassment of having to go and explain something? Because see, and it's so funny, man. That's a, this is the reason why I hate dudes who, or and not just men, men or women who prey on other people, because yes. it puts them in this position like they have to deal with a certain level of embarrassment, and they almost to some extent feel like it's their fault. Yeah, and it's not. No, no, no. Say it again, because you know what I'm yeah. saying? No. it's not. If you've been molested, if you've been preyed upon, if you've been, you know what I'm saying? Like violated, like it's right. not your fault. It is right. not your fault. We just have some, some really sick individuals in this world. And so, uh, I mean, not to, not to go too far off track D, but I want, you know, those who may be listening to the podcast today and figuring out like, how do I go about doing that? Ask yourself some questions before you even make a move because the answer to your questions will give you fuel to make the move. Do I wanna deal with this another 10 years? Yeah. Whatever that feeling brings. And if not, you know what I'm saying? Then shoulder up whatever it is that feeling that's holding you down or keeping you oppressed. And like, for real, go ahead and bring that suck out into the open and slate. And I'm not saying the open in front of everybody, but I'm saying an open in terms of going and seeking help from a, 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 a qualified you know. clinician. There you go. Yeah. I want to I want to say uh, something that's very important before we before we move out, bro. Mm -hmm. And I like that 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 the sister put it in in the article. Mm -hmm. Misinformation is the worst. Child sex abuse victims are not destined for deviance. Ah, oh, come on. But despite its repeated discrediting a, quote, cycle of abuse myth, and this is in the context, uh, ladies, of child sex abuse, because there's a cycle of abuse that I agree with mm -hmm. when it comes to being in an abusive relationship with a, a husband who's an abuser or a, a, some other partner that's abusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this cycle of abuse myth in the context of child sex abuse persists. Mm -hmm. But in the simplest terms by Houston's Child Assessment Center, mm -hmm. 500,000 babies, get this. And this was back in 2013, Quest. And I don't know when the study was because I didn't read the article, the study related to this. But in the simplest terms, Houston's Child Assessment Center, 500,000 babies born in the United States this year will likely be sexually abused before they turn 18. But that's not where it ends, Quest. The vast majority of these victims will not, I repeat, I'm repeating, will not grow up to be sex offenders. Wow. So we, we cannot sort of perpetuate the myth that because we, you and I both believe that hurt people hurt people. And I'll put in the, in the middle that people Come who on. are hurt can be, can, can. Come but on. that does not mean that a person must 
And the statistic, according to this particular uh, study, says, you know, there's not 500,000 or a large portion of the 500,000 who will almost invariably become themselves sex offenders. So I just want to get that out there. So somebody, if you're married to a man who is now you find you just found out, maybe he's listening to this and he's downtrodden and you're like, what happened? And it's like, dude, I got to tell you something like. Can we talk? And and then he starts to tell you, wifey, like it happened to me. Mm-hmm. Just resist the urge to think, boy, if it happened to him, then he is sort of a higher statistic mm-hmm. for possibly yeah. becoming coming. Yeah, okay. I mean, yep. because that's a myth. It it, yep. it it it's a myth for a number a number. Of reasons, but just and, and, you know, I just want to put it out. Don't 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 speed by that too, uh, uh, D. Not only do yeah. I not want you to develop that thought. But I want you to be, because you know how men are. We very, we have egos. They're very yeah. fragile. Our manhood yeah. is everything. Do me yeah. a favor, sis. If you are a wife and your husband has come to you with this thing, create the environment yeah. for him to feel safe. Yeah. For him to feel affirmed. Mm-hmm. For him to feel loved. And then the best way you know how coach him and coax him towards getting the help that mm-hmm. not only he needs, but now the both of you need real talk. Like yep. for real. Yeah. I don't, I don't want us, I don't want us to speed past that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 yeah so we really just sort of, uh, I would say responsibly wanted to bring the discussion out into the open. Mm-hmm. So that hopefully if, you know, if this is something that you're dealing with, whether it's known or not known in your household, Mm -hmm. that at some point very soon, hopefully as soon as possible, that you can move toward uh, healing in your life, your family's lives Mm -hmm. and and so on, Mm because it's yeah, it's, it's a crazy world quest. Yeah, here's the here's the part that 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 I'm worried about the most, D. Huh? What's that? Yeah. Oh no, I'm saying that we 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 know that the 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 end result or the what marriages are supposed to do is to produce a certain level of intimacy, a certain level of oneness on one accord, if you will. Mm-hmm. I know that that doesn't happen overnight. That that takes a a, a a you know period of time. But when you have things like this that come like bring that journey to a full stop, and unless you get rid of this. Like for real, I, I, the whole purpose of marriage is to become intimate, is to become one. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the word says that for this reason shall a man leave his mother and father and mm. cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Oneness. Yeah. And when yeah. you have stuff like this that has a foothold in the marriage, like, I, like for real, my man at one point in his marriage slept with a, a, a long pillow in between him and his wife. That ain't yeah. it, bro. Yeah. You know I so, so I, I want to give some consolation And this is not one of those happily ever after, at least not in the article, but you can see the transition point here, Quest. And I want to I want us to to, to close with this thought. She said, I know this couch moment will pass, Mm -hmm. that it will never be as bad as those first early and uncertain days. Mm -hmm. I am grateful that I is now a solid community of we Mm -hmm. because. Now, most nights, instead of waking up to sounds of Trav thrashing himself alert, because, you know, I guess he was having some kind of night terrors, Mm -hmm. if not that, something else. Mm -hmm. I wake to find that at some point in those early morning hours, my husband's hand is reaching across our bed's center pillow to rest on my waist. Mm. So... You know, I, I, I want to call her name, uh, go back to the top, uh, Shauna Milliken Humphrey. Mm-hmm. Shauna Milliken Humphrey is now beginning to experience some of the benefits of her husband's healing. And so they Come together on. Come are on. healing. So Come there's on. hope for anybody who is in this situation, whether it's a husband who's been abused. That's what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. But. If you're a wife who has been sexually abused, while the details are different, the reality is the same. So there is hope. It's just it takes a lot of time, a, a whole lot of help. And, you know, from my perspective, clearly, 
you know, lots of prayer mm -hmm. and the Lord can help and will help yep. if you just learn to trust him. Yep. It takes time. It is not overnight, but yep. you can get through it. And get the help, though. Get the help. Go get it. Yep. Yeah. yeah stay focused, y'all. Yeah, man. All right, y'all. Yeah. Thanks for riding with us. I know that this was loaded and heavy, but, you know, like we say, marriage ain't for suckers. It's, it's one of those things. We Some things are very, very heavy to deal with. Yes, and we do. It's a win for everybody in your house and outside of your house. If they have, if you impact anybody outside your house, which everybody does, then this is a benefit to everybody. So thanks for running with us on this. Yep, 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 yep. Shouts out some people, man. Yeah, well, listen, I see my 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 good good friend Debbie, Debbie Banks Quadro. I don't, you know, I don't even know how to pronounce your your last name, Debbie. I'm ashamed because I don't know your new husband, your your newest your new husband. How many years you've been married, Quadro? But hello, Debbie, and then of course Frenchie's in the building. Oh yeah, as no always. Yep, Sasha, Nicole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Shonda was in the building today. Ronnie Jacks, BK stand up. Bit up, yep. Nisha, you know what I'm saying? My girl Tosh, Tasha from way back when, you know what I'm saying? Excelsior Elementary School Day, she was in the building. Shouts out to her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I saw that. You see how she responded to you, how she referenced oh, yeah. you, right? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it took me a while, man. Like, Isaiah was like, I was trying to figure out how you would quest, because you'd be acting a little weird, like, when you're trying to say, like, speak his name. I was like, because I've been calling him something, like, all my life, and then I had to call him something else. It just throw my head <laughs> off, man. Yeah, you know we all childhood names, man. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah, I see Thomas Felder came through. Big up, Tommy. B oh, B word. Big stand up. up. BX stand up. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Michael Allen. Yep. Shots out to him. Yes, sir. Yep. And it's then, of right. course, uh, yeah. your, 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 your associate, Jimmy Roberts from New Zealand. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, that's my new Facebook shit. friend. You know what I'm saying? We went international now. Yeah, <laughs> man. New Zealand in the building. In the yep. building. Yep. The wife came through. You know what I'm saying? Shouts okay. out to her. Happy yeah, anniversary as yeah. we embark on this seven years. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, my wife came in on her incogni incognito profile because yeah. she don't be on facebook no more ah yeah mm -hmm. all right well let's go get this up uh, post p in okay all right y'all well again thanks for riding with us and uh yeah have a wonderful day wonderful we'll day we'll see y'all all that good stuff see uh, what what, what, uh, oh, what was that look uh we'll see y'all we'll monday marriage moments monday uh, we'll see y'all uh, okay yeah, okay. You're throwing me off, Quest. Okay. All right, y'all. Peace.